hey, this is man-made mead. Today we're doing something different. We're making a braggot. And um, so you see a bunch of new things here. There are lots of uh, oats and wheats and hops and uh, various things that uh, all go into making a beer. And so we are going to make, because a braggot is a beer and a mead combined, basically, we're making an American pale wheat, which I got this from um, the kit for now. I have brewed beer before, but it's been a long time. And uh, we'll be using that kit, which includes um, flaked wheat and crushed pail. Then we have some malt extract, as well as some hops, and a different yeast. This is the yeast that came with it. Um, I was gonna change it up, but I think I'm gonna try this Bry 97. Um, it's got a, a good fermentation temperature range of like 68, it's pretty ideal. Uh, it can go up to about 12 or 13% ABV. Uh, and that's good because this kit itself will get us to about um, six and a half percent. And I want this to ultimately be about a nine to uh, maybe 10% mead, uh, braggot, excuse me. So we're gonna put some honey with it. So we'll use all of the ingredients. I'll make sure and list them here as I'm talking. Um, and then we're also gonna use, I, I need to get my gravity uh, up to like one point, I think it's 1.08 ish range, uh, and that will get us to about 9 or 10%. So I don't have an exact amount of honey yet, uh, we will determine that. But with brewing a beer, what's different is we have to go ahead and um, we're going to bag some oats and do a bunch of various things. So the first step is going to be to um, bag these and then also get a little bit of water started. So we'll start with uh, start with a pot over here, and I will mention that today I wanted to brew with a friend, and so you'll see someone else in the video um, to join us. Going? So, I also can show our, uh, Hugh's actually gifted a few little horned mugs, so these things are uh, pretty cool. It's like a Viking horn. It is really easy for, really nice for drinking meat, so we'll be drinking some meat out of that. Super All right. fancy. Yes. Okay, uh, we're going to get started. Let's get about um, following these instructions, making sure I don't get anything totally wrong. Uh, we're going to use about a gallon of water um, and get that going and get our, uh, our hops and everything, not hops, but our wheats and stuff bagged. All right, so here are we using two different containers. This is a smaller um, pot that will hold about uh, three-ish gallons, and then here's a bigger one that will hold five gallons. Ultimately, we're going to use both of them, but we're going to start off with this. I need a gallon of water, um, and we need to start it to heat up. The thing with brewing a beer is you do not want to overheat your wort, is what they call it. So when I end up steeping all of these wheats and stuff, I don't want to over go over 150 degrees, 155 degrees. And this room water is room temp right now, so I'm going to go ahead and. Um, get it started to where it'll get closer to the 150 degree mark and I'm going to be really good about um, not messing that up. So starting to heat up this water, it'll take a little bit, um, but that is okay. And we can, in the meantime, take and bag with this muslin bag all of our uh, oats and wheats and stuff like that. So you're using the entirety of these? Yes, we're going to use bags. the entirety okay. of both of these. So let's go ahead and pour them in. Okay into the, yep. this thing. Mm -hmm. Neat. So this is the crushed pail. It's a pound of crushed pail. Uh, and I'm pouring it in this thing because it gets a little dusty right now. Um, which, like I said, this is American pale wheat. Uh, now we're gonna pour our one pound of flaked wheat in here. And this is what we end up steeping um, into this water. So uh, after this is all in, we'll, it's all in there. Yep, we will, Go ahead and tie off the bag. Neat. Yep. And it's just like a giant tea bag, but it's kind of like oats and whatnot. So in a moment, when this water is closer to 150 degrees, we will go ahead and put it in, and then we start to follow the directions that the um, that the the paper for the kit gave us. So we will end up steeping these. Um, for about 45 minutes at 150 degrees. This is what I'm reading from right now, which should be pretty easy, hopefully. Uh, so we'll be back in a moment when this is closer to room temp, or it's closer to our boil temp. 
All right, so we are at 150 degrees here. Uh, we are ready to go ahead and take our, our oats and wheat and go ahead and put it in and steep it. Um, we will let this sit for 45 minutes, but the unfortunate thing is it can't just, uh, can't just set without us watching. We're gonna have to sit here and make sure the temperature doesn't go too far past 150 degrees. So um, I'll be watching that pretty consistently. I won't do a lot of video part for this because it'd be 45 minutes of you just watching me make sure this doesn't go too far. Um, so I'm gonna be back in a little bit with some updates, but um, this is what it is for right now. Okay, it's been 45 minutes and this is steeped in here for all 45. It has been sitting at 150 degrees the entire time because we've been watching it, making sure. The next step is I don't want to squeeze this. Uh, sometimes you do. In this case, especially following the instructions, I don't want to squeeze this bag. So I'm gonna let it kind of drain for a moment and then uh, we're gonna add, this is a gallon of water and um, we're gonna do two things. Basically, we're gonna run it through this bag, which will allow us to hopefully get some of the extra stuff that's in it out. But then also, uh, we're working on getting this volume up to two and a half gallons. So, um, let's go ahead and do that. If you'll help me, we'll just like try and pour it <coughs> over pour it. it over. <laughs> Basically, right. yeah, it's kind of sketchy, but. All right, sketch factor 9,000, but I think it'll be okay. How's that? Yeah, that's great. Good. It's not as sketchy as I anticipated. Let's just try to get the stuff out. Get going. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, it's working pretty well. And I will say that that water that we're putting on top of it is mm -hmm. hundred was well, 150 degrees as well. So um, it is the same temp, meaning I don't have to worry about trying to reheat everything. Now, uh, the next step is I'm gonna let that drain for just a moment, but then we are going to take, um, and this is where we start to add like our hops and various other things in. So, um, I'm gonna go actually just gonna go ahead and move this over. We need for the next part, uh, we have two different kinds of hops. Uh, we are going to use, this is looking at our instructions, um, we're going to do the Palisade hops first. So this is one a whole ounce of Palisade hops, and this is still going to be setting at that 150 degrees. With our hops, we now want to um, add them in and then let it boil for 40 minutes with this. So it's a lot of waiting, basically. Uh, beer, making beer is a lot of uh, monitoring temperature. We're still keeping it at the 150 degrees the entire time. We don't wanna get, um, well, excuse me. This next step's a little bit different. We're gonna get it to a rolling uh, boil, which means just a little bit of motion, not a ton. We're just sprinkle these on top. With both of our hops, we'll, we'll add the um, Cascade ones later. So sprinkling these on top, Get it to a rolling boil, so I'm gonna turn up my heat. And then um, put another timer on for 40 minutes this time. And then after that, um, we will go to the next step. So these hops will sit in here that I just added for 40 minutes. One thing I will add while we wait for the hops and everything to go is that these spent wheat and the pail um, basically is usable in other ways. You can make like bread, you can do various things with it. Um, there's a company uh, that actually makes dog treats out of this stuff. So um, you can use it if you're crafty. I honestly will not use this um, just because I don't really have a use for it right now. I'm not that crafty. But I highly encourage you if you are smart and know how to, how to not waste this stuff, figure out how to do it. Uh, or share with us how to do it down below in the comments and that will help us out. So uh, instead, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss these since I don't really have a great use for them right now. You are also going to add, I have two of these 3.3 uh, 3 pound containers of pure malt extract. You're gonna add that in with the boil um, that will go for 40 minutes. So we're gonna add this, this in. It's all of course gonna change the temperature a little bit because it is room temp even with my water that I've added. So I'll add this part in and then it will sit for our 40 minutes. 
So as I'm adding this in, um, I'm of course going to stir. It's going to be all at the bottom, which means that uh, it, it's going to get heated up quite a bit and I don't want it to burn. So this is also the stage where you're pretty constantly um, turning and making sure the meat itself uh, is not, not the meat, goodness, the beer itself is um, not burning. And this malt extract is really nice, but like I said, it will get too hot. We don't want it to caramelize or anything happen because it is very thick. It's a lot like honey, um, but it is kind of the big base of the mead. mead. Oh my goodness, of the beer. I make so much mead now that my brain uh, <laughs> thinks I'm making mead sometimes. This braggot's gonna be really good though. And there's still some in here. I won't be able to get it all out, um, unfortunately, but that's okay. So now we let it sit for our 40 minutes and I'll stir pretty consistently to make sure it doesn't go too crazy and boil over or anything like that. It has been 40 minutes and we have the uh, other malt extract and the Palisade hops have been put in here and they've uh, been boiling. I've watched it, stirred it, make sure it didn't go too crazy. We are now at the point where we put the other uh, canister of the malt extract in and then this will boil for 15 more minutes. Um, after that, the next step will be to put the very last hops in of this one, which are Cascade hops. And, uh, we will allow those to go for five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring this in. And these, I need to go ahead and stir as I'm doing this. Um, this malt extract is super nice and honestly has a great flavor. Um, this is a huge basis of the mead. Of course the hops are a big basis of the mead. <sighs> mead, I keep saying that, of the beer. I need so much mead here, of the beer. Um, that we want to, of course, do this part right. So. This will go rolling boil for 15 minutes. Um, I will stir it, make sure that the uh, that the malt extract doesn't get too messed up on the bottom, caramelized or anything crazy, uh, and then we'll go from there. So I'll be back in about uh, 15 minutes. All right, one thing I also want to do a little different than what the recipe says, because I'm making a braggot that's gonna have honey in it ultimately, I'm not gonna put all of my honey in currently, but I do wanna put a pound in. So uh, this is 2.1 pounds. I have a scale that I'll measure. I'm gonna try and get a pound of honey into this part, um, and that will help with some flavor. Honestly, I want I want some of that um, honey flavor in this little brew process. And then what I'll ultimately do with the rest of my honey uh, to get my gravity up is I'll end up waiting about 24-ish hours till, I, uh, till the, the whole beer itself is that's perfect, 1.1, 1 .1. um, is down to a roomish temperature. And then I'll add the honey in because I don't want to heat my honey up too much. I want a little heated honey that will uh, help with some flavor and different melting things, but I don't want all of it to be um, ultimately put in right now. So uh, I just put in a pound of honey and this is still going with our second malt extract um, and it has about 10 minutes left. Um, in this portion. The very final step of the process is to add our last hops, which are Cascade hops. Um, and these, I haven't really talked about the, the different flavor profiles of each one, the Palace Sand. Um, it says aroma, floral, fruity, and earthy tones, uh, English and American style ales. And then the Cascade is medium floral, citrus, and grapefruit. Um, U.S. ales, pale ales, stuff like that. Anyways, I believe that, um, I haven't even mentioned at the beginning of this, this braggot is going to be a blueberry, excuse me, blackberry braggot. Um, and I totally forgot to mention it because I've been thinking about the beer side of things. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pitch these just on top like I did the other. And it will continue to boil for five minutes. Um, now, let me go ahead and explain too what I'm doing with the rest of this. Okay, so what I'm doing with this um, is it's going to be a blackberry braggot, and I'm going to use, this is about three pounds of blackberries, and ultimately I'll need more than that because I have a five gallon batch, but I want to put these into the primary, so I had uh, taken them, put them into this, into this bag, frozen them, and thawed them. So now, um, what I'll do is I'll put them in after, excuse me, whenever this is cooled down, we'll cool down all of our wort, and then I get it to about 70 degrees, add all of our water into it and then I, I will put the uh, blackberries in. We'll ultimately wait uh, a little bit before we pitch the yeast 
because I don't want to make sure that the yeast are comfortable and acclimated and, and know what they're doing. I'm not um, acclimating them like I do my wine yeast with this. So I kind of want to try that. Uh, with this beer, you don't really have to. In most beer yeast, you don't have to sit there and acclimate with all of your firm aid K, go firm, uh, various yeast nutrients because um, I think they operate just fine. So uh, what we'll do, because these are, they're frozen, but they're thawed now. I'll add them in just a few minutes um, to whenever everything's cooled down. And then later on, because there are some of the primary, I know that I'll lose some of that flavor from uh, getting blown off from probably vigorous fermentation, but I think it'll help to put some there. And then I'll also put some into the uh, secondary as well. So ultimately it'll be probably relative to, um, I want to say eight pounds of uh, blackberries and the, the other five pounds of blackberries will come into the secondary. But uh, our hops are almost done, second round of hops, and then when those are done, we'll move this into um, an ice bath. We are ready to take this container and move it over and cool it down to 70 degrees. It is, um, I can get a, a temperature check on it right now. I bet it's up in the 150s and yeah, it's definitely pretty hot right now, and that's okay. Um, we want to, it's going to take some time to cool down. And uh, while putting it on ice, which we're about to do, will help. Uh, it also just going to take couple, probably a couple hours, too. Um, so in your world, you won't see all the time I wait, but it'll, I'll have to wait a while before anything changes. So let me go ahead and put this in the ice bath. Okay, so this has been sitting for a little bit. It's still really hot. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, put it, siphon it into my water. And this is my blackberries, my three pounds of blackberries in the bottom. So um, I'm gonna siphon and try not to get any of the extra stuff that's at the bottom of the, um, of the pot because there's gonna be a lot of that. I'm gonna put this straight in here. And ultimately there will be some sediment because of random things, but uh, I'm going to try to minimize the amount of sediment that we have. So I'm going to let this go. Okay, so just like um, a normal mead, there's lots of sediment at the bottom. And this is definitely a fair amount of sediment. Um, with this uh, this beer we've made. And so ultimately I didn't want to dump it in because then I'd get all of that and it would just be sitting at the bottom and not really work uh, to help the braggot at all. So this is ready to actually have some honey introduced, and but I need to first take a, a gravity um, reading to see where it's at. So let's check the gravity. Our gravity reading with everything in it puts this beer, there's Braggot currently at 10.5, which means that there's a potential ABV of about uh, relative to 6, yeah, close to 7%, 6.5%, uh, which is good uh, for what we do for the box. Now the thing is I want to add some honey in to get it to about 10.9, and on 10.9, uh, that would put our ABV at around um, about, excuse me, 10.85. Ooh, do I want to go that far? No. I want to go to about 10.8. Um, and 10.8 will put us at that 10% mark, which is frankly, I think, a good level for this um, bracket to be at. In order to get there, um, I could go through a bunch of math equations and figure it out, but honestly, I'm, my test is just going to be to start adding honey, stir it up, and check the gravity. Um, so I'll do that right now. Alright, so my scientific method that I'm going to use here is um, a scale. And this is right now uh, about, hold on, let me make sure I'm getting the right thing. Um, with my scale, I can I can get get a better guesstimate of how much honey I've been using. Two point uh, one five pounds. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add in um, add in some. Let's say we add in a pound of that. So we're gonna get down to one. 
pound. One point, yes, 1.10 right there. And now we can go ahead and stir it um, and get a new gravity check. All right, we've stirred up pretty thoroughly. Let's see what our new gravity is at. We are now at 10.6 or 1.06. Um, still a little ways to go. Let's add our another pound of honey in and then see where that lands. Here's the next test. In hindsight, I should have probably not put the blackberries in so early. However, I did, uh, and so now we're kind of dealing with it. 10.7 or 1.07. Um, let's go just a little further. Uh, I, so far I have three pounds of honey in. I would like to get um, three and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a half a pound in now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our half pound, 2.15. Get it down to 1.65. See if that's close. So earlier, wow, interesting. I think my scale had a problem because it was three pounds. So I put in, well, one pound earlier than three pounds with this, and I just put in uh, about, um, I'd say that is a half, this is about a half pound now. I don't know why my scale is being funky. Earlier it said two point, yeah, weird. Okay, so that's a half pound of extra honey. We're gonna go ahead and stir this part up and then, um, and then see what the gravity is. I believe this will be our last gravity check. For those of you who are wondering, this is a degassing wand. Um, I use it as a stirrer because it connects to my drill and it works for what we're doing. So we added a half pound. We now have four and a half pounds of honey in here, meaning our gravity is sitting at, if I have done everything correctly, and it not, doesn't get interrupted by anything, 1.075, and that equals exactly where I want it to be, which is about 10%. Um, and I am very, very content with that right now. And the yeast that I'm using will run up to that, um, to that ABV really easily, actually, which, to remind you, um, is the Bra or the Bry 97. And uh, I wanna take a temperature check of this, make sure it's not too hot. If it's still too hot, what I'm gonna do ultimately is just let it set. Yeah, we're at a 93, 94 degrees. I am gonna um, wait a couple hours and then I will um, pitch the yeast in uh, later, basically. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but for now, what, I'm, what I'll do is I'll put the cap on it, put the lid on it and call it good. Um, this is the blackberry braggot that will have more blackberries. I should have put them, honestly, uh, I'm okay with this right now with them being on top. They did disintegrate pretty quickly, especially after I stirred. When I put the other five pounds I plan to put in, I will put them in a bag and put it in there as well. I expect this fermentation to probably be very vigorous, which will be nice, um, but it will be fast. And I don't think I need to treat it like I do all my meads where you aerate and you think about all these nutrients because I think it'll be just fine. That's unless something uh, goes wrong. So I will anticipate that and change something if I need to. All right, it has been about a couple hours and it is down to um, 70 degrees, which is where the temperature we need to uh, add our yeast in. So I'm using the Bry 97 and I talked about, I've never used this before, it's a beer yeast and I am honestly excited to see how it, how it ferments. Um, this is an 11 gram packet, so plenty of yeast, frankly. Uh, it should get us to about 13% um, ultimately, but we only have that 9%-ish area. Um, normally I would rehydrate this stuff, as per the packet says, but I won't this time because I'm going to follow the exact recipe that the 
kit says, and I don't want to rehydrate this. So, simply enough, uh, because I'm not rehydrating, I'm going to just sprinkle this on top of the, um, on top of the braggot. I also want to do a little test because I could stir this up, um, but I'm actually just going to let it set for a little bit and see how the yeast respond. If they start to go down, um, ultimately, yes, I'll push them down if they don't. But uh, I know that they'll start picking up pretty quick. I would normally end the video here, but I'm actually going to wait a couple days and, and give you some updates on the fermentation before I do that. So I'll be back in just a moment, this is a few days later, with some fermentation updates. Uh, quick update, I'm actually going to start, so I, I lied about that. Here's a cut to a few days later. Okay, it has been five days. I've been stirring this pretty well. It's been fermenting very vigorously, which is nice. And now I want to take a, a gravity reading. So with what I have been doing and what I normally do is use like a, uh, this little test tube and then of course a hydrometer. So let's go ahead and, and get a quick gravity reading. Okay, the gravity reading shows right now that it is at uh, 1.0, about 0 0.035, so it was about halfway there, we are five days in, and um, it was at 10 point, uh, or sorry, excuse me, 1.075 when we started. So it is moving pretty fast, um, and I'm content with that. It should put us at about a 10% ABV, ultimately, which is going to be great. Uh, so I'll, of course, do update videos about this in the future. Um, but for this video, we're done for now. Alright, so that's the end of the Braggot video, the blue, or Blackberry Braggot, goodness. Um, I'm really excited for this one. I've never made a Braggot before, so it'll be really interesting to see how it turns out. Um, it was, it's at a decent ABV, about 10%, or will be, ho hopefully. Um, I don't plan exactly to back sweeten it because it's such a beer base that I want to keep it in that same light. I'll do priming sugar and stuff when I bottle it to try and give it that little extra kick to have some carbonation, but I do not plan to back sweeten or anything like that. I want to treat it more so, not as a beer, but I want to try to keep the braggot mindset going. So, um, that's the end of that. If you want to help support me, I have a bunch of links down below that help me out. You can join to be a patron. For only $2 a month, you can get early access to content. All of my patrons will have seen this video um, at least three days before before it comes out on YouTube, and then you get access to uh, exclusive live streams, and then for five dollars it goes on. It's uh, you can win a T-shirt. Anyways, lots of great opportunity um, opportunities for you to to support me, but also get something out of it, and that's what I want. Um, there's a Facebook page where you can follow me and uh, join the community. Man-made meadery is what what's called, and I'll put a link down below. Um, of course, YouTube is a great way to follow me as well. So. Thank you guys for supporting. Um, check out all of the links down below. I, I love getting to talk to you guys and getting to, um, you know, just ultimately uh, be part of this community and help lead you guys in it. And um, I'm hoping that we are continuing to grow, continuing to grow this community more and more each and every day. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Cheers.